Okay, I'll tell you how. I'll tell you as if it were a technician, and then how to get it ready to go. Perfect. All right. Okay. Ready. One, two, three, go. This is the monsoon jet ventilator. It will be stored in the corner. Prior to getting it ready for a patient, you need to make sure that the air and oxygen are connected to the wall. Power is connected. You need to obtain a new unused blue jet tube. They're in a bag. They're not sterile, they're just clean. I would recommend poking a hole in the bag, pushing it into the appropriate port, letting it hang in the bag. That way, whoever's coming in knows it's new. If the line is just connected and hanging on the floor, one might make the assumption it's, it's clean, it's dirty when in fact it's clean. So that's, that's a recommendation. After you ha have attached those, the power button is on the back side. Depress it. The jet takes approximately 30 seconds to turn on. When the screen turns on and has display, then the jet is 100% ready to go. On the jet, when it comes on, though, it has a, a start button, on, off. That's what starts the jet, stops the jet. There's no standby. It just either works or it doesn't work. Um, there are three settings you control. Inspiratory time, driving pressure, and frequency. It's a touch screen, but not such as a cell phone would be. So you have to press, slightly hold, adjust, push the button in, and it sets the... And this is used as an open system ventilation, 100% egress. There's no control over how much air comes out. Always pushes air downstream. 100% of the time if air is coming out, the first item, eye time, inspiratory time, how much time are you dedicated to pushing your breath downstream? It moves in 5% increments from 20 to 60%. The lower the eye time would be more beneficial for some of your COPD ears. The higher eye time is going to benefit oxygenation. There is no way to control PEEP on an open system. Increasing eye time, small increments, would add PEEP, and that would aid in oxygenation if your SATs would fall. Uh, FiO2 is 100% controlled by the user from 21 to 100%. If you start out at 50 or 60%, you might use eye time to affect changes to saturation versus going straight to FiO2. Your provider likes to go straight to 100% FiO2. And he likes eye time to be 35%. Driving pressure, how hard does the gas get pushed downstream? It's based on the wall pressure from 5 PSI all the way up to 60, 50 PSI, sorry. Your provider likes 26 PSI. That's adequate. That's going to give you good gas exchange. Your CO2 should be fine. You shouldn't have to make any changes. Keep in mind, there is no way to monitor CO2 on a jet ventilator. There is no end tidal sample and no end tidal breath. Therefore, a capnograph will not work. So you have to obtain it if you want to know CO2 by blood gas, unless you have a transcutaneous CO2 monitor. In a, in a short case such as you have, it's not indicated to do monitoring of CO2. Your concern is saturations. The other item you have to play with is your frequency. Frequency on a high frequency system is not to be con confused with respiratory rate on a conventional ventilator. If you're in a conventional ventilation mode where you're down around 18 or below breaths per minute, then this frequency would be assumed to be equal to rate. But at a breath a frequency of 120 breaths per minute, this is not really a respiratory rate. This is just how many times a minute is it trying to inflate the alveoli. This has a maximum of 150 breaths per minute. This would not provide adequate gas exchange for a patient of large patient size. You just, your CO2 is going to start climbing rapidly. You just don't have enough. We're, we're pushing 100 mil tidal breath. Even though we have good, our, our minute ventilation is high, we're still moving to such small amounts of, of gas, we're not going to have good CO2. If you were to drop this down to a normal range, 120, 115, we'll be pushing 160, 170 mil tidal breaths. That should be more than adequate to provide adequate gas exchange, the CO2 levels down, your SAT should still hold fine, and you should have no problems. Your provider likes a 120 breaths per minute. The other item you have is a pressure sensor. This device measures pressure feedback from the lung in between pulses 
it measures what the pressure is being exerted on by the lung. If that volume or that value exceeds a preset limit, it will stop the jet from delivering a pulse, preventing barotrauma. Right now it's at 24 centimeters. On the display up here is a display of PP pause pressure. When it's reached, the jet stops ventilation. It won't ventilate again no matter what you do until the pressure of the lung bleeds off. Then it goes back to normal ventilation. Clearing, so we got lots of blockers there. PP is pause pressure. It's a pressure measured off of the blue line. It will only stop the next breath. It will not stop the breath you're in. In the, in the way you're doing it now, you only have the option of hooking up one line for your patient's safety. This is the jet delivery plus it measures uh, pressure. If you were in another case where you had the op opportunity, say in the ET tube, you have a pressure port and you have a jet delivery port. This allows you to connect the red line.